Eileen. Have you ever felt insecure? Have you ever felt fat? Have you ever hated yourself and felt ashamed for eating? This is what it's like living with an eating disorder, and today I would like to share a part of a speech written by a woman named Nicole in her struggle with anorexia. And then I would like to tell you about the types of eating disorders there are and what they are, factors that contribute to eating disorder and to, to eating disorders and to statistics on eating disorders. This is part of Nicole's speech. 3.30 a.m., get up, go to the gym, run six and a half miles, burn 600 calories. 4.30 a.m., do 800 sit-ups, do upper body, lower body strength training. 5.30 a.m., go home, take a shower, take a nap. 9 o'clock a.m., wake up, study, drive to school, attend class, drive home. 3 to 9 p.m., eat a little, study a lot, eat a little, study a lot. 9.30 p.m., take a bath, go to bed. This is a typical day in my life with an eating disorder. I have lived with this commander who tells me what I have to do, what I can eat, and how much I must exercise almost for five years. 11.25.97. I had breakfast and forced lunch down my throat. I can't believe I ate lunch. I have to run. I have to throw up. Just, I have to throw up, so I have to run. No, you can't do this. You must fight. Just give in, Nicole. This is what you want. Anorexia also twists words around so that any positive statement turns negative. All in her quest for absolute perfection. 11.25.97. Dr. Norman, Blanca, and Marisol all said that you look good. You know what that means, don't you? That you're getting fat. You're such a piece of shit. It's pathetic. She also has her own view about the scale. 11.98. 100 pounds is fat. The scale says I weigh 89 pounds. I don't believe what the scale says, nor do I believe what my clothes show or people say. I know that I'm fat and I refuse to weigh 115 pounds. 8.14.97, I want to be skinny, skinny, skinny. I want to lose weight and I want to get down to at least 80 pounds, if not lower. I can relate to this speech because I am anorexic. I have been for the past 17 years. And no matter how hard I try, I can't, I can't escape it. I've been in and out of treatment centers, most recently in January. I thought I had recovered and I haven't. This was something that my parents had done for me. They wanted to see how beautiful it was. And at first I loved this picture. And then I started looking at it more and more and I saw all of these flaws. I'm down 15 pounds from when this picture was taken because all I could do were see all of these bumps and all of these things that I hated more and more about myself. I wanted to do something that I saw was inspirational. I wanted to choose a speech written by a woman to Austrian parliament, and I couldn't. I wanted to do one that Princess Di had written, and I couldn't. I chose this one because I have walked in her shoes, and I'm walking in her shoes still. But this is me. I wanted to have the courage, like RJ had, to do something personal. So now I want to tell you about the three main eating disorders that there are. Nicole was anorexic, and anorexia is a self-starvation. It's where you lose 15% of your normal body weight. And you have a distorted body image, and you see yourselves as fat. Even though you're abnormally thin, you refuse to eat, you only eat small portions. You'll take your food and you'll cut it into small things and you'll extend your meals out as long as you can just to appear normal. You get cold and you lose your hair on your head. And you grow like a downy like baby, like hair all over your body, all over your face, everywhere like that. Bulimia is a preoccupation with food. You just live for your next meal, just so you can binge and you purge. And you can purge with laxatives, you can purge with over-exercising, you can fast, you can purge with a diuretic. And then there's compulsive overeating, or it's also known as binge eating disorder or bed. And it's where you, you'll just eat and you'll eat and you'll eat, you'll eat. And sometimes you'll, you'll fast for days or 
go starve yourself, or sometimes you'll just be completely overweight, you'll be morbidly obese from it. Um, then there's the factors that contribute to eating disorders. There's the psychological factors that you'll have a low self-esteem or that you feel like you're not in control of your life. So an eating disorder is a way of controlling your life because you can be in control of that. And there's interpersonal factors. You have trouble with a personal relationship with your parents, with a boyfriend, with your husband. Uh, you can't express your feelings or your emotions. You've been teased or you've been ridiculed about your weight. You've been physically abused or sexually abused. And there's social factors because then is glorified. You're hired more for jobs. Um, you want the perfect body. It's a cultural norm in some societies. There's biological factors. There's chemical imbalances in your brain. Eating disorders run in families. I remember being small and I remember watching my mom throw up because she felt that she ate too much. Um, there's st statistics that over one and a half teenage girls and nearly one third of teenage boys use unhealthy weight control behaviors like skipping meals and fasting, smoking cigarettes, vomiting, and taking laxatives. I read that in an article called I'm So Fat. 42% of first through third graders, girls want to be thinner. That was in the International Journal of Eating Disorders. 81% of 10 year old girls are afraid of being fat. That's from the Journal of Adolescent Health. In the U.S., as many as 10 million women and 1 million men are struggling with an eating disorder, such as anorexia or bulimia, and millions more struggle with binge eating disorder. Research dollars spent on anorexics average 70 cents per affected individual compared to over to the $159 that were spent for individuals with schizophrenia. Anorexic have a higher percentage rate of dying over any other mental illness. Um, so I guess, I hope today that you're able to take away something from this, whether you remember the type of eating disorders that there are, or the factors that contribute to it, or if you're a parent, some of the scary factors that there are in statistics, and that eating disorders are monsters, and that they'll consume you, and they'll tear you apart.